Hello and welcome to Creative Ghettos, the show that explores various creative industries and profiles the Africans who push them forward. Each week I spend 30 minutes unveiling excellent and inspiring individuals within creative industries, including, but not limited to, fine and contemporary art, architecture, design, food, film and literature. My name is Gwane Lukunene. Thank you for joining me right here on brandlive.co.za. This week, I was lucky enough to get access to the Ngawuru Contemporary African Art Offices for the sole purpose of chatting to the company's founder and director, Tepi Zomotlala. Ngawuru is a project that encourages conversations through contemporary art, which change perceptions of the continent. The company's exhibitions have brought together ideas and commentary by artists from countries including Egypt, Ethiopia, South Africa, Uganda and many other parts of the continent. These conversations morph into a base to appreciate who we are and can become as united Africans. This is Tepi Somotlala's story. Tepi, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, I think the best place to start is the beginning. Let's yeah. speak about your earlier years before you ever considered contributing to the arts in such an impactful way. Who was Tepi so before now? Okay, Tepi is um, a, a woman uh, who was born in Swaziland. Um, my father is from South Africa and um, I was raised by a very strong woman, my mom, um, a single mother. And um, yeah, I grew up in Pimville. Um, you know, my love for art started at a very young age, at the age of, I think, 12. Um, I did ballet at a Federated Union of Black Arts oh, then. Wow. <laughs> wow. And yeah, that's where the passion really started of being in the creative space, enjoying um, to be more, uh, to express myself. And then when I was still young, it was through movement, through dance. And um, yeah, and my mom, who was also an entrepreneur, I think I got a lot of where, who I am today because of her. You know, what she instilled in me at a very young age. I was not even aware that I'd end up being an entrepreneur myself. But yeah, um, yeah. so basically that's where the love and the passion for art started. And um, yeah, at the age of, um, I went to varsity, I went to ML Sultan and I did my- in Devon. Oh, okay. Now it's called Natal Technicon or oh, Natal. Okay. They've merged, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I did commercial law, and that's when I realized that I don't want to be in that space of business and commercial law. And I decided, Mom, I'm going back to my creative space. Mm. And um, yeah, then I, 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 um, I registered with UNISA, I did my marketing with UNISA, and then um, AAA advertising. And yeah, the journey continued. Um, I started my work environment at the age of like 20 after my, my mom passed on it when I was 20. Mm -hmm. So basically I had to find a way, but I think I was grateful for one thing that she gave me the tools at that age to yeah. be able to navigate because she allowed me to be who I am or what I wanted to be, which was I navigated the space of being in the um, commercial space and then also the creative um, space. And um, yeah, then I started doing my internship with the Johannesburg Civic Theatre then, which was um, when I was doing my um, public administration with BIDS, um, that we had to do internship. So they placed us at the uh, different, you know, it had to go with what you're really passionate about, and yeah. I was more passionate about the creative sector. And I did my internship in marketing and advertising, marketing and PR then with the Civic Theatre. And that's when, um, yeah, the whole thing of business and the arts actually started, ah, my journey started. Yeah. And um, when we were, when I was doing my internship, I was very close with, I worked very close with the German Chamber of Commerce and then the German Embassy. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And I also started something which I never thought I would do, which was community development in Soweto. I danced with the Soweto Dance Project no way. then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, um, I think it was in the 80s, eh? And we used to, and I enjoyed that that whole development space of doing ballet in the ghetto where yeah. it was like no proper floors and there we are doing the plies and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, then um, I think when I was doing that sort of teaching and being in that space, we um, we established a very good relationship with the German embassy and then the German chamber. They, those were my, they my deeper days when they wanted to do a lot of mm. development work in the township. And I felt, you know, there's there's a gap in the arts where business and the arts, we, we do all these development projects, but we need to also have um, people who can administrate and fundraise and so that we have better facilities and we understand the business side of the arts. And I approached the um, German Chamber. And then it was, we were also going through a phase where um, government was cutting down on funding art projects, you know, and it was not a necessity. Um, government wanted to prioritize mm -hmm. on housing, RDP houses, and, and, and. So we had to find a model that would actually find, um, make business to sort of continue to fund the arts. Mm. And then um, I approached the German Chamber and we, um, we did a research with the Civic Theatre to establish what is it that needs to be done for, to keep the arts and arts institutions in South Africa alive mm. without government funding. And I got in, um, in, well, sort of a scholarship through the German Chamber to study in Germany for two years. Yes. But it was sort of work and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I did my internship in Germany then in, um, I can't even remember, but I was 22 then. And, um, you know, it was more business and the arts, finding ways to, um, yeah continue to support the arts organizations and arts institutions. And um, yeah, I worked for Audi Germany and in, I was doing marketing and PR, but also focusing, it was more social corporate investment focusing mm -hmm. in the arts. Okay. And um, yeah, I enjoyed my time there because um, then I remember I had a, a specific project with Lord Yehudi Menunghim who has uh, passed on now. And he was a celloist mm -hmm. and um, who identified Kutlano Masote in South Africa to wow. be, yeah, and he sponsored Kutlano Masote. Okay. So because I was a South African working in Germany, they said, well, this is your project, you focus on this one. But it was actually quite exciting because that's when you realize that um, in Europe, the arts is taken really, really seriously. Yeah. And they, 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 they it, it's, for corporates, it's, it's, it's more of their way of giving back. Why, why do you think creative industries are not widely considered professional spaces? It's very interesting that in Europe they are, you know, they are really part of the backbone of of um, of, of commerce. But yeah, it's so completely different. I think it is important. Um, it's how we, as people in the creative uh, space, we need to start making business sense for corporates to also start investing in us. Mm -hmm. So if what I mean by that is that um, we need to start taking our trade seriously. It's a profession, we need to be paid for it, we need to make money out of it, and we need to work with business to actually make, to, to see value in why they should be investing in, in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what I liked about Audi Germany then, um, their, their, their payoff line used to be for Sprout Death Technique. There's engineering behind. For engineering to happen, there has to be a creative process as well. Yeah. So they would bring in creative um, uh, people, um, um, professionals and, 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 and um, people from the engineering sector to come up with concepts of how the design of the car. So the design of the car also goes with the engineering of the car. And if an aether is going to look like this, okay. then yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, I think that's where how you realize the importance of bringing the two together because um, we have a role to play in the whole economic ecosystem, mm. you know, mm. and um, and. I think yeah, that's what I what what why actually I also just to fast track why I'm doing what I'm doing now mm -hmm. because if people don't see value in what we are doing, we'll be perceived as ah oh, those creative ones, yeah. you know. And but it's it's how we 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 take our we should take our trade seriously, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because also you know the more we go on just being sideline creatives yeah. it's the more we are going to have broke creatives which is yeah not, not yeah which is not yeah. not cute yeah okay so so i want to just get to Ngauru. Yeah. um the name where does it come from and why did you choose that specific name to be your company's uh, uh title the truth is it was by default <laughs> You're gonna tell me some romantic story. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I think it was based on 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 my personal experience of traveling the continent and how South Africans were perceived then. Um, just post 2010, you know, we had the World Cup, rah rah, the whole continent coming to South Africa. Mm. But um, as you navigate the space within the continent, you realize that um, we are not taken seriously. And by then, they used to say, but you guys don't even have a culture. You don't even know who you are. You're trying to be Americans and na na na, you know. And um, I just felt like it was a wrong perception and and people didn't, didn't really know because we were closed off from the rest of the continent for quite some time during apartheid yeah and and i think um we when um and this was sparked from my travel i was in ethiopia and um we were treated really badly as south africans you know literally we were the last people to leave the airport because they felt like we came with this attitude like we wanted to be vvips and they will show us mm -hmm. so we were the like when the airport closed at two o'clock they said okay the last taxi go and oh, wow. Yeah, and the same thing happened when we were in Burkina Faso. So literally, they were like, you, there you come against South Africans who think you're the big brothers of the continent, you're going to dictate to us. Well, this is how things are done in the continent. So and when I came back, I thought, you know, we need to sort of have a dialogue and start looking at who we are because Africa, for me, we are one, mm. you know, and we have different cultures, but it's such a vibrant continent with so much to give, yeah. you know, and um, and this these these borders, where do they come from? Mm -hmm. You know, why do we have these borders that actually don't allow us to engage with each other because there's so much to share? Mm. And I approached the Department of Arts and Culture and I said, look, um, you know, the rest of the continent celebrates Africa, Month, Africa Day. What are we doing in South Africa? We sort of, they sort of, they were sort of in, in starting to talk about it from their international relations. So it was being at the right time at the, but yeah, yeah. 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 The right so, space at the right time. The yeah. right space at the right time. <laughs> and the, they, they, then, they were also starting to, because when I went to Burkina Faso, I engaged with um, um, our government, and they were also experiencing the same thing, that you know, people were like, who do you think you are? Oh you know? So it was important for South Africa to engage with the rest of the continent and create those bilateral mm -hmm. relations and to show that you know, we've been disengaged from the rest of the continent for such a long time. Let's start, let's start to collaborate. Let's start working together. Mm. So then the Department of Arts and Culture started doing campaigns around um, Africa Month, which I thought, thank God, you know. But again, that year when I approached them in 2012, they were, that was when we started having our first xenophobic attacks in South Africa, and they were hectic. Mm. People were killing each other. And it, I think that was when I realized that, you know, we need to start, that, that, that there's more to this, these xenophobic attacks. Yeah. South Africans, they feel like people are just taken from them. Mm -hmm. But again, um, people from outside South Africa, I think they used to have a perception then that we're just lazy, we're not taking opportunities. But it's just looking at the deeper dynamics of mm -hmm. the, our socioeconomic system in South Africa and where the, our, um, yeah. 
yeah, I don't want to use the word foreigners, but people from the rest of the continent yeah. were coming with a different perception. Okay. And yeah, so that's when um, I decided, okay, we need to come up with something, um, a name. I will read that's where it comes from, but it's a Quezan name. Oh. It's, uh, it, it means I see and acknowledge you for who you are. Yeah. So, uh, is it like Namaste? Namaste. Yeah, yeah. like uh, um, it is Namaste. Yeah, um, yeah. I acknowledge you. I, I see and acknowledge you. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah, beautiful. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, you you've been in the game with Mwawuru for six years now. How has um, how has what you do been received in South Africa, firstly, um, and 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 in other parts of the continent? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's seven years um, later. I'm like, okay, we're still doing this thing. I think in South Africa, um, it's, some, it's a platform that is really, really needed. And it's not just in South Africa, but for the rest of the continent. It's a platform that is needed where our contemporary artists within the continent can, show, can just uh, showcase the best of what we have in the continent. And again, acknowledging our own. You know, I think for me, that's the most important thing. When you go to Europe, you have all these, um, and it's still African um, visual artists from the continent to like your um, uh, um, El Nansuiz and all these big names, mm -hmm. Ke William Kentridge and, and, but I think for me, it's, it's why do we have to go outside the, our borders first be, to be acknowledged and to, to interact and mm -hmm. to be acknowledged to be, you know? So um, this platform really is about bringing both um, your established artists and emerging artists to be in one platform, to create markets for them, to have dialogues that are actually um, affecting the continent. And it's, it's, I think, a platform that is really needed. Um, and I think it's been, so far, even the curators who have been part of the, our journey, um, they've, they really, yeah, speak positively about the project yeah. and, and they feel it's, it's a much needed space that needs to grow. And, and I'm, I'm happy that I have the support of my fellow brothers and sisters out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, mm -hmm. Um, you know, when when you first start anything um, that is somewhat foreign to you, especially starting a business from the ground up, there are fears that start flooding in. Um, and yours was not centered on where you're from only. It, it, it dealt with so many cultural, like uh, cultural diversity, language barriers, so many, you know, political barriers. Yeah. What were some of the fears that you had when you were, when you were still fresh into your business venture? Um, to be quite honest with Ngauru, um, my first year of Ngauru, uh, it was an exciting year for me. Mm -hmm. I think um, I was excited. I was so happy to see um, different artists from different parts of the continent engaging, having this walkabout. So it was like, wow, yeah. this is it. <laughs> but not really understanding the, the, how big the project was. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for the, the first, when we launched, it was like, we are doing it. But then when you are passionate about something, you always want to push boundaries. Like mm -hmm. it's not just an event or an exhibition for one month. It goes beyond um, that Africa Month exhibition, mm. you know, you look at other platforms, you look at gaps that are in their sector. Um, and uh, I think it was only during my second year that I realized that, wow, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> because um, you, you, you look at other platforms and you look at um, Gaps, like I said, that you know we bring these artists here, and then what happens next? Then um, we need to create a market for them, mm. which is why we started the Black Collectors Forum. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the Black Collectors Forum while yeah. you're still on it. What What is it all about, and and what is it that you, what is it all about, and what is it that you'd like to achieve um, with it? Okay, so after two to three years of doing the Africa Month annual um, exhibitions, we realized that we needed to have a platform where, you know, South Africa's economy has moved now and we have all these um, influencers and people who are now 
earning well and they, they they're looking for different platforms to invest their money mm -hmm. they've got they've invested with stock exchange they've got their big homes their big cars and they, they've traveled the world yeah. And when you bring art to them, they're like, what's this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Why, yeah. 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 <laughs> Why is it two million? For what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to show it off to all my friends. It's yeah. not like a Louis Vuitton bag that you carry around and you're like, yeah, yeah. I was in New York, you know? So we needed to start tapping into that market that was not, um, you know, they, would, they wanted to know more about what the arts, uh, especially the visual art space, but, and I, but they don't know how to, mm -hmm. you know. They'll get invited to your uh, exhibition openings, but they wouldn't really engage because they were, you know, it was still foreign to, mm. you know. So we felt we needed a platform where people can just have an art for TikTok, ask those silly questions that you wouldn't ordinarily ask at a dinner table when you're invited by a good man, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 Sorry to mention names, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but because the spaces are a little bit intimidating. space, it's mm -hmm. quite intimidating. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just from my observations that when you go to an exhibition open, you could count the number of black people there. And all of us, we walk around like we know what's going on. Da, but no, no, no. <laughs> thinking, why would this thing be to me? Who is this Javel Sikoto? Yeah. Why would I invest this amount of money on, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, and when we started the Black Collectors Forum, we felt we, there are people who have been collecting during the apartheid days in, um, in yeah, when in exile. And um, we need to start engaging with them, collectors who have been collecting. Mm -hmm and to have a platform to show what is it that they're collecting and try and get new collectors in the space and create a platform again where it becomes a lifestyle for our affluent black audience that, yeah. you know, it's no longer so foreign because I didn't do, yeah, I have no, something that, true. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we started that and we, we invited, I mean, Ngawu has always been about bringing influential black um, curators and collectors in the space to um, change the perception, mm -hmm. you know. So when we started um, the project, I started with um, Andile Makengelele, who has been in the space for a very long time, mm -hmm. and Mahatu has been a collector herself. And uh, we started engaging with other artists like Bosem Tlengetwa to Andrew uh, Shabango to say, Tembingosi, you know, people who yeah, it was. I felt like yeah. we needed no, a movement. Clouds. Yeah, we need yeah. we need a movement of influencers in the space. Let's 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 do it. Yeah. So that's how the Black Collectors was uh, started in 2013. So when someone wants to get involved with the Black Collectors Forum, how do you go about doing that? To be quite honest, it's an educational platform for us. Um, we st we're still not making any money or business sense out of it, but it's more of a platform where we cr create awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we haven't even got to the a point of membership as yet because we felt like people will think ah, they want our money for this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but once people start seeing value yeah. in what we are doing, then eventually, then it will. Yeah, we will look at the membership, etc. But now it's more an educational platform for collectors, emerging um, collectors, and young people who also have, that we are educating to start looking at art differently. So Mauro discusses very contemporary human um, topics, which some people would, you know, rather choose to sweep under the carpet because they can yeah. seem a little yeah. bit controversial. Yeah. Um, things like respect for the female body, recognizing the rights of people who don't identify with a specific race or even gender. Why is it important um, for Africans to have a collective discussion about these subjects? Wow, well, I think because, you know, when you look at are different cultures and different our our political uh, background and other things that uh, become barriers for 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 us not to be, to be able to open up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think those social 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 economic issues are important. We need to address them to 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 look at where we are at and uh, where we are going as the continent. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think one thing that I'm really proud about the project since inception, we have always been on point with our um, curatorial narrative addressing issues that are affecting the continent. Um, when we started, if I can take you quickly through our journey, um, the curatorial concept in 2012 was about taking ownership of our own mm -hmm. and creating its, it, it yeah. Um, and the second exhibition that we had was about creating those markets to make sure that what we are saying, it's we're taking ownership of our own, acknowledging our own, but also creating markets for our own mm -hmm. and looking at how that whole ecosystem will work within the visual art space, you know. Um, our third exhibition, uh, in I think it was in 2015, it was rerouting dialogue. That's when we started like a deeper dialogue of, okay, this is, um, I think it was, um, yeah, the 20 years of um, into democracy and we had to look at where we are at as South Africa and what other kind, how the rest of the continent contributed towards our liberation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. So it was rerouting dialogue and really addressing those issues and having a conversation about where we are at now, the now South Africa and where we want to see um, the future, mm. the Africa we want to see. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, as we are we evolve, I think there are so many things, so many dynamics, especially with young people as well, that people are starting to question culture, people are starting to question religions, yeah. politics, etc. But it's now our voices are starting to come out. People are starting to say, listen, we need to now change things. You know, we've been colonized for such a long time. Mm -hmm. We need to start having a dialogue that is much more meaningful. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Temikosi it curated our show in 2015, and it was towards intersections. You know, we have um, young people who have been uh, in exile and who grew up in the U.S. and Germany, and they're now coming back home. And identity is important because you haven't been a part of this, and now you're told about culture. You can't do that. You can't do that. So how mm. do you then now start mm. finding that voice yeah. that says, okay, I'm this global person. I'm traveled all over but this is who I am this is my roots are here mm. and um, you know how do I then um, start engaging with the rest of the world and still know who I am mm. Mm. and still maintain the culture if you have to you know and 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 yeah so basically that's that's what the, this ongoing dialogue is all about um, yeah, and in 2016, we had our international curators, Paula Nascimento and Rafael Chikukwa. And they also um, had, um, what is the name of the, being here, I think. No, being no, here, it was, yeah, mm -hmm. being here, it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, being and becoming, mm -hmm. that was the um, theme for uh, 2016. And being and becoming was really an ongoing dialogue from towards intersection that, Okay, how do we start engaging? And now we, we are where we are at. Let's look at all these political issues, um, decolonizing basically the art space mm. and, and how things have been perceived in the past years. So from here onwards, how would you like to see Nauru um, growing as a company and, and facilitate our conversation between Africans? I think what we've been doing is... Um, it's a very important platform to look at um, how we can address this issue, uh, topical issues that people do not really want to talk about. Mm. Well, I wouldn't say they're topical issues, but issues that people do not want to really address in a public platform. Mm. And um, to continue to engage with the rest of the continent because the, the, all these issues, socioeconomic issues that we are dealing with, they're so similar yeah. with the rest of the continent. Yeah. And... Um, how do we then um, continue this dialogue and also create a platform for our artists to express themselves, you know, and, and be part of the socioeconomic system where business, government, and the visual arts sector, they engage, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I mean, to be quite honest, I think what we are looking at is to create sustainable platforms 
and platforms that would really benefit our artists in the continent. So lastly, when it's all said and done, how would you personally like the world to remember you? Creating a legacy, a sustainable legacy within the creative space. Done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And that's a, that was a beautiful, beautiful conversation with Tefiso Matala, who's the founder and director at Ngawuru Contemporary African Art. Ngawuru will be hosting a new exhibition at the Zambia National Museum in Lusaka in September 2018. You can keep up to date with the company's projects via Instagram at Ngawuru Contemporary Art. That's Ngawuru spelled K-A-U-R-U or visit kauru.co.za. To find out more about the Africans who drive various creative industries, forward make sure to follow creative ghettos on instagram at creative ghettos my name is guanelo kunene join me again next week friday from 2 to 2 30 p.m for another impactful show bye for now <laughs>